Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Um, as a director of the PFL Library, I have the great pleasure to welcome you to our Open Access Conference, which is a part of the International Open Access Week. In order to address the different issues and problems about publication in open access, we have brought together some major actors. Funding institutions and editors working in the open access domain will illustrate us their policies, their reasons and way of functioning, and of course, they will be happy to answer your questions. The issue in itself is very complex, and we have deliberately put our speakers in front of an almost impossible exercise, sorry, making a brief presentation of a difficult topic in order to leave time for your question and hopefully a debate. I have to inform you that there will be this afternoon a little change in the program because at the very last minute, news has come in that Professor Lashwell cannot be with us today for personal reasons. Thanks to our colleagues of the CERN in Geneva, we will be able to offer you an interesting presentation of Zenodo, an open digital repository of research outputs. But let's no longer wait, and I will tur now turn the floor over to Professor Devo Plédran, Dean of Research at EPFL. I would just like to remember that as a physician, physicist in the, in the field of photonic, Mr. Devo Plédran is a member of the community that has undertaken the first important initiative in open access, I think about archive, of course, and for this reason, the topic is quite familiar to him. Professor Devo Plédran, and I'm talking to you both as the Dean of Research and the President of the Research Commission of the EPFL, is the publication in open access for you still a high stake question? Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you here in the name of the direction of EPFL to this Open Access Day. I mean, if this... Yeah, uh, so as was said, I, I'm the Dean of Research of EPFL and I've been working on the different sides of publishing as as uh, with the library of EPFL, but also as a researcher. I, I will start by giving you a few numbers about EPFL. Uh, for those of you, you who don't know our school, uh, the numbers I have are the stable number that date back last year. We, we don't have the full number for this year. So our campus uh, welcomes something like uh, 9,300 students, among which 2,000 PhD, we have more than 300 faculty and 4,000 staff. Uh, what is very important is that we are spending quite a fair amount of money. And uh, I'm sorry, no, no, this, I missed that one. Uh, the school is organized in five faculties, uh, basic sciences, uh, in computer science and communication, engineering, life sciences, and uh, architecture, and civil engineering. We have two colleges, management of technology and human and social sciences. We have a large number of interdisciplinary centers, uh, an even larger number of institutes, and uh, about as many labs as we have professors, a bit more than 300. So this is how we are organized. We are financed quite generously by the Confederation to something like 550 million Swiss francs, but one third of our budget typically comes from outside. And on this one third, about 100 million comes from the Swiss National Science Foundation, uh, 51 million from Europe, and uh, a large number from industrial contracts. So this, we have really a large amount of external funding and we are very proud of that, but this is the result of the quality of research that, that has been done at EPFL. 
And in particular, one of the indications of the quality, I mean, we, uh, we love to show this number, is just the number of ERCs that we obtain at EPFL. That's the latest number. I mean, the all, all the ERC grantees since the start of, of uh, the ERC grants, and you see that EPFL with 76 uh, professors obtaining an ERC grant, basically half junior, half advanced, is the fourth institution in, uh, in Europe. And how do we manage to do that? Well, you all know this is very easy. We try to uh, engage the best professors worldwide. So we have professors coming from Germany, from France, from Italy, from Switzerland. We all have some of them from Switzerland, and so on and so forth. So we are trying to hire the best quality professors, give them the means to work as well as possible, and my job here is very simple. My job is publish or perish, because if you don't publish, you don't show up, and you see here, if you look carefully, you will see that you have the Dean of Research who is uh, threatening the poor professor to publish. And this is not a new issue. I mean, publishing and uh, the use of libraries has uh, been present already in, in the ancient time. This is the Alexandra Library. If uh, you don't know it, this is the Singalen uh, University and uh, library, and this is a new uh, uni uh, library in Mexico. So the, uh, having a library is the place where you put the published work and you are able to read the published work. So this is what we are here for. We want to be able to publish in a reasonable way and to be able to read the publication of the others. And, well, as in my position, I have a dean. I'm, I'm a bean counter. That, that's very simple. For example, we need to count the number of publications of EPFL over the years and to spread that across the faculties. That, that's, that's easy. Well, we don't do that, do that for fun. We do that because a large number of funding agencies are using it, and they rely on the rankings. And we've been very proud to, uh, that, that the, the ranking of EPFL in the different rankings, this is our ranking amongst European institutions, is, is very good. And this is in particular based on our results in terms of publication. The, the last one here, which is the crown indicator of the Leiden ranking, is really based on the citations of the work of the, of the, the researchers at EPFL. So this is, this is a very high uh, in the index of quality. You have other indicators than Leiden. For example, if I'm looking for the academic ranking of world universities, where EPFL is not that well, I mean, we are around number 100, and if you see, the, the, of course, the, the, the number of things that they are counting uh, start by the number of Nobel Prizes, which we are not very good yet. Uh, but it includes, the, I mean, this is amazing, it's not the number of publications. It's the number of publications in science and nature. And I mean, I, I don't think this is really fair, but this is the way they are doing it. So we have we have to do bean counting ourselves, so, so we are publishing in science and nature, and we are counting the number of publications in science and nature, and you see that this number has been increasing uh, quite dramatically over the last years. I mean, this is very simple. This is how we increase uh, our ranking on the search engines. You see, yeah, once again, this is me trying to explain how we are doing and we are, we are changing the, uh, the rankings. Uh, I assume that most of you are publishing in this room, and, and you know what publishing means. I mean, there is, you, you first have to face the bloody referees, and this is an image of, of the uh, parcours du combattant, of the poor researcher trying to publish uh, his paper. And uh, there is another way of doing it, because I've, I've publishers here. I mean, so you, you, have the, you can blame the referees, but you can also blame the editors. So you have the publisher with the to be or not to be list, and uh, this is sometimes what we uh, are, are facing. So, so as Isabel was saying in the beginning, uh, at this time we are facing really a change in the way 
publish, scientific publishing will be organized because the old way of doing it obviously cannot continue. We want that the publications are open to everybody. So this is the reason why first we've signed the Berlin Declaration uh, and so that the uh, EPFL is saying that we, we abide to the, the, the principles of open access. Not only are we doing that, but we have an uh, uh, institutional re repository which is called InfoScience, where you can, uh, our, all our researchers can put their publications in open access as much as the publishers allow. And, 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 uh, and we are going in that direction, and we are also pushing together with the funding agencies more and more the researchers to go to open access. This has a price, and the difficulty that we will have is how do we manage the, the transition from cost with standard publishers to the transition of cost to, towards open access uh, publishing. I don't have the answer, and what I hope is that uh, within this uh, very interesting day, you will come with some possible answers that we and advice that we can follow. I wish you a really a pleasant meeting.